fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for the Black Hills. There's going to be trouble. Hail Silver! Boy! When gold was found in the Black Hills, new communities sprang up almost overnight. Each day brought men with their families who had staked all on being among the lucky ones who struck it rich. Flimsy houses were thrown together. Cafes and gambling places did a flourishing business. Prices of commodities went sky high, and everyone talked in millions. The Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived in the Black Hills after a trip of many days from the country to the south. They headed toward Deadwood. We'll make camp somewhere near Cranesville, Tonto. That long way before town Deadwood. I know it. But I want to talk to a few people in Cranesville. Maybe we won't have to go to Deadwood. Why that? We want to learn all we can about Clark Drexel. Um, that's right. Well, Cranesville is near one of the richest gold mines in the Black Hills. In fact, the town is named after the owner of the mine, old Eli Crane. Uh -huh. If Clark Drexel and his gold mine syndicate have had any dealings in the Black Hills, well, Eli Crane will know about them. I think we can learn as much from Crane as we can in Deadwood City. And maybe find where Drexel will do crooked work, huh? We've got to find something in the career of that man, Toto. Some evidence of crime so he can be jailed. Yes, we know that Drexel was one of the organizers of the Black Arrow. But that fact can't be proved. The only thing we can do is find some other reason for jailing Clark Drexel. And that won't be an easy matter. Hang up, Kimosabe. Uh, Set oh, who's got it? Oh, oh. Look down there, Tonto, in the valley. Uh, their town. That's the town of Cranesville. We'll make camp here until morning, then we'll push on to town and have a talk with Eli Crane. Ah, uh, you wait. What is it? Me hear horse wagon come this way. Wagon? In these mountains? Yes, you're right. That tunnel, I hear it too. Ah, uh, there it come. From hill above. You see it? Yes. It's a fine place for a man to bring a wagon. I wonder why he didn't use pack mules. Here, pull off the trail, Tonto. Give him as much room as we can. He'll need it. Uh, come, Scout. Come. That's it, boy. Easy now. Oh, 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 you're going to shine, Wendy. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, you hit them too, Hank, while I hold these cantankerous horses. They want to keep going downhill. Mast. By Juniper, he's mast. Never mind where they are, Lodge. Lair up and get for home. This is just the way we'd have planted in a special order. Get. Get along there. Get up there. Get up there. Maybe them fellow loco. You hear them? Yes, I heard them, Tonto. Why them take empty wagon downhill? I don't know. Why are they using a wagon at all? A hard trail for a pack mule. Dangerous for a wagon. And wagon empty. 
There's no town uphill from here. The only town close by is Cranesville. If they'd been going uphill, I would think they'd plan to bring ore down in their wagon, but this... You... you see the way one fellow look at you? Yes, at my mask. Ah. I wonder what he meant by that statement. Ah, you remember what him say? Yes, he looked at me at the mask and said, never mind who they are, get for home. This is the way we'd have it if we'd planned it special to order. Home. Him say, get for home. That mean downhill, maybe Craneville. You want to follow? Not tonight, Tonto. Our horses have had enough. We'll camp until morning. Then we'll ride to Cranesville. Eli Crane was an old man and a wealthy one. His gold mine was the richest in the Black Hills and his home the largest in the district. His son Jim lived with Eli as well as Jim's daughter Molly. Molly was a pretty girl of 19. As she opened the door for her grandfather, her face showed worry and concern. Graham, you've been hurt. What happened? Oh, gone it all. It's my cussed infernal bad luck again. Oh, come in. Let me wash your head. Oh, you poor dear. What happened? Oh, don't get yourself excited. It's just a little cut. Not near as bad as it looks. Get her washed off and it won't amount to anything. Here, this way, Graham. Oh, how did you do it? I didn't do it. You think I'm plumb loco? Bashing my own head? I was in the Gold Crown Cafe, and a couple of liquor swizzling saddle bums got to arguing, then shooting. It's a bullet wound. Uh, just grazed me. But then a quarter inch of killing you. No, oh, ouch! Doggone it, Molly, it hurts when you wash it. Claire, you shouldn't be allowed outside the house. The trouble you've been into during the past week. It's my doggone bad luck. If I'd have had this kind of luck all my life, I'd never lived to be past 60. Uh, easy with that there biting. Burning medicine now, Molly. This will fix the wound. Now, don't yell when it starts biting. No. Oh, that's like a red-hot branded iron. That's the worst of it. Oh. Now you'll be all right. Well, that scratch won't need a bandage. How's your arm? Oh, my arm's all right. But it's a nine-day wonder it wasn't busted from that fall I got when the bridge went down. It's a wonder you weren't killed by that fall. You sure must be a tough one, Grant. It wasn't being tough that saved my neck was grabbing onto a tree on the bank when the bridge caved in under me. Oh, hang it all, Molly. I wonder if I'm jinxed and hoodooed lately. Seriously, Grandpa, do you think all the things that have happened to you, the narrow escapes, were were really accidents? Hmm. What else they be? You haven't any enemies? Enemies? Of course not. Well, might be a few men I wouldn't call friends. But no enemies that want to kill me. Now sit down and rest. Your head must ache something frightful. No, not too much. <sighs> Saw Rodney Grant in town. Oh, then, then he's back from Deadwood City. Yep. Did did he see Pa there? Talk to him. Oh, I, I'm glad. Let me know that Pa's safe. Rodney said that Jim wanted him to tell us he'd be back here in a week or ten days. Good. It was just a plum foolish notion of yours, Molly, that anything had happened to Jim. Oh, I, I suppose so. Tarnation take it, you had me beginning to worry. Where'd you get the idea in the first place? I... I don't know, Grandpa. Why, I felt that something had happened to Paul. Just a woman's full hunch, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. And uh, Rodney Grant said he might drop in for a little while. Oh. He don't act over-pleased about it. Why should I? <laughs> All right, Molly. Your, your pa thinks Rodney'd make a fine husband for you. Rodney thinks the same. But by Juniper, I'm with you, whatever you decide. And Rodney's educated, of course. And a good job, working for that big gold mine syndicate. But you make up your own mind, honey. Don't let yourself be influenced. I'll answer it. That's probably Rodney now. Well, Miss Molly, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Grant. Won't you step in? Oh, thanks. Well, Eli, how... What happened to your head? Got grazed by a bullet in the cafe just after you left. Well, you don't say. Yep. Sit down, if you like. Thanks. You had a narrow escape, Eli. Had a lot of them the past week. It's getting kind of tiresome. Oh, I told Molly that you'd talk with Jim. Oh, you Thank shut you, up. Mr. Grant. It was kind of you to go all the way to Deadwood. Just because of my silly feeling that something had happened to Paul. Well, anything to give a pretty girl like you a little peace of mind. Worry's an ugly thing. Oh, I, I was so foolish. When that old prospector came in from his trip and told of seeing a dead man at the bottom of a ravine, I, 
I had the strangest feeling that it was Paul that he'd seen. I don't know why I felt that way, but I couldn't shake it off. Well, you needn't have any further concern, my dear. Your father's alive and well in Deadwood City. Does anyone know who the dead man is? No, but we will very soon. Oh. Two men went after the body. He should be back by this time. Probably some poor prospect. You're a modest man, Rodney. You didn't say that you hired Lige and Hank to go after him. Oh, well, I Did didn't... you really? Nothing at all. The Drexel Syndicate will be glad to pay the expenses. We have a great interest in all prospectors and miners, you know. And what I hear, that outfit you work for can well afford to help prospectors and miners and see him get a decent burial. <laughs> right you are, Eli. Well, that, that reminds me. Have you reconsidered my proposition? Nothing to reconsider. I won't sell my mine. Of course, it's up to you. Uh, Grandpa, you really should think it over some more. Paul says you do well to sell out. All of us could go... I listen. know what the mine's worth. And Drexel Syndicate don't come close to that price. Well, we can't, you see, Eli. Many a time a mine will peter out suddenly. And, of course, the way we operate, it costs a lot to bring and install a heavy machine. When I'm dead and gone, Jim can do what he's a mine to. While I'm here, I'm keeping the mine. Uh, no hard feelings about it. Of course not. <laughs> None at all. Hey, Mr. What's happening outside? Mr. Grudge! Mr. Grudge, you there? Well, that's Lige, one of the men I sent to get the dead man. I left word for him to report to me here. Hey, Mr. Grant. Oh, what is it? When you're here, it was stolen. Mess man did it. He robbed us. Oh, wait a minute, Lige. You come inside with me. The rest of you stay there. Yeah, Mr. Dog, going to sing. Wait to hear, Mr. Grant. We went up there with the prospector said. Did he go with you? No, he told me and Hank where he saw the dead man on the floor of the ravine. We found him all right. Was it anyone you knew? No, just an old prospector. Where did you take the body? Well, that's just it. We was held up on the trail. And a man with a mask and a white horse stole the corpse. What's that? It's true, so help me, Eli. Why? I don't know why. Well, this is a fine thing to talk about in front of Miss Molly. You come outside and tell me the rest. But Mr. Grant, Such I... things are not for you to hear. Out with you. Sure thing. Hi, hey, Mr. Grant. What did you do? I'll talk to you later. Over here, Elijah, you crazy no, hold on, Mr. Grant. Let me tell you. Shut up and listen to me. No one else knew that Jim Crane went to that section instead of the Deadwood. He was making a secret trip. I told you just to make sure it was Jim. And if so, to come back and say you hadn't been able to find the body. Oh, but listen, if we'd have done that, the sheriff might have sent the men who reported it out the there. fool I saw to it, the old prospector left the community. He's miles away now. Yeah, but we said we couldn't find the corpse. The sheriff might have sent more men hunting it. You could have hidden it until we needed it. The sheriff still might have found it. We did hide it. We saw that masked man and his Indian friend. We figured it'd be a good idea to say it was stolen. Now the sheriff will scour these mountains for the masked man. What if he finds that masked man? Let him. The man's likely a crook anyhow. What did his word mean? Who will believe him if he says he didn't steal the dead man? Now, you let us help you, Mr. Grant. Maybe you're a slick operator, but me and Hank savvy the way things are handled in this part of the country. Let the sheriff find that masked man. We'll handle things. The following morning, when the Lone Ranger approached the community, he was seen by a man who let out a wild yell. There he is, riding into town. Hey, sheriff, Lodge, Steve, boys, come on in. In an instant, men came running from the stores, the nearby houses and cafes. Get guns on him! Get him rope! The sheriff, wearing his star of office on his vest, pushed to the foreground. Get off that horse, stranger. You're the gent we're looking for. What's the matter? Does everyone get to That's our mask. Oh, yes. Well, let me talk to you alone, Sheriff, and I think I can explain the mask. You'll explain a lot of things, and you'll do it right here and now. Here was a map in the prospector's pocket. I told you about that, Sheriff. You attacked two men who were bringing a body of a prospector. You made off with the dead man. I what? Who told you that? I did. Here's my partner to back up what he said. The law acts fast in these parts, mister. You'll tell all you know and go on trial or you'll hang by sundown. How can I tell what I don't know? You can't make us think you don't know. Now talk. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger remained in the saddle while the sheriff and many townsmen surrounded him with the demands for a confession of crime. Come along now. We'll take you to the jail and maybe see if that won't make you ready to talk. One minute, Sheriff. I'm not going to jail. No? We'll see about that. Those men have lied. They saw me on the down trail. They saw an Indian with me. That's right, Sheriff. I told you about the Redskin. Their wagon was empty at that time. You stole the corpse to get a map that he had on him, showing where his claim was at. 
The name of the Indian with me is Toto. I rode ahead of him in case I met someone who misunderstood the reason for my mask. Right now, Tonto is watching us. We'll arrest him, too. He's watching and ready to shoot any man who tries to stop me. I'm leaving here. Come on, Silver. Hey, get him. Shoot him down. Get him. You drop gun. Don't shoot. I dropped my gun. There's the Redski. Get him up. Stop. Get him, Bull. Shoot him. Doggone, they both got away. Well, anyhow, Sheriff, we can watch for him. Fine pack we are. A dozen of us here, and we let that masked man get away scot-free. But that horse, sizzling bacon, did you see it travel? Nothing like it. We'll hunt him down. We'll start more men out to look for him. You deputies come to my office, and we'll organize so he'll be hunted down. All right, come on. Hey, go tell Mr. Grant what's happened. It's all worked out for his reason. All day long, the town seethed with excitement. Men rode through the hills looking for the masked man and the Indian, but found no trace of either. One man in town followed events with more interest than anyone else. It was Eli Crane. These young upstarts never got around in the West, Marley. That's the trouble. Thunderation, I could tell them a few things about that masked man, the white horse, and the Indian named Tonto. You? You know him, Grandpa? No, but by Juniper, I'd like to. Outlaw my eye. Thief my foot. Lige and Hank are the out and outness no good that ever lived. The only thing I wish is that I knew why they lied. I would. Well, I'll be boiled in stale water. Grandpa, what? The masked man. Please don't be frightened. I had to slip in with the rear door. There he stands, Molly. Take a look at him. I am. They call that man the Lone Ranger. Mister, I want to take your hand and shake it. Thanks, Eli. Thanks. I've, I've got to speak to you alone. Without Molly here? Yes, it's important. I'll go to my room, Grandpa. Thank you, Molly. You'll understand later. Very well. Eli, do you recognize this silver belt buckle? Where, where'd you get that? Do you recognize it? I gave it to my son when he was 21 years old. He's always wore it. This buckle brought me here. I, uh, I found it in the hills. Jim was in Deadwood. No, Eli. He wasn't in Deadwood. But the hills? Well, after Tonto and I got away from the sheriff's men, we followed the back trail of those two that lied about us. We found what they'd done with the man they took from the ravine. Go on. This, this isn't a pleasant duty, Eli, but it may prevent further mischief. You know now. Jim is dead. It was Jim in the ravine. Yes. He took his belt, brought it here. To make sure who he was. I, I hope to learn why those two hid the body. Was he murdered? No. He stood too close to the edge of a ravine. The ground caved in under his feet. I wonder... Oh, gone it all. I wonder what those two lied for. It was Rodney Grant that hired them. Grant? He's from the Drexel Syndicate. Trying to buy my gold mine. I won't sell. Tell me some more, Eli. Tell me everything you can about Rodney Grant. Will you trust me that far? I'll tell everything I can think of. You sit down there and listen. For over an hour, old Eli talked times choking up a little as he thought of his son, Jim. Then Molly was called into the room and the little conference continued for another hour. Later that night... Great Scott! Shooting in old Eli's house! Get him! Get him! There he goes! Come on, Silver! Come on, boy! Hurry! Hurry, get the sheriff! Tell him to come at once! Tell him it's my grandfather! Shot? You had the shot! You saw that masked man! The masked man! Great gun! Tell the sheriff to come! Oh, do hurry! Wait here, men. I'll see Miss Molly. Sheriff, I'm waiting for you. Come in. Right with you, Miss Molly. Come in, Sheriff, but, but come in alone. It wasn't until the following day that Rodney Grant heard the news. And he called a meeting of the men who were helping him. He grinned as he closed the door behind him. 
Fate certainly gave us a hand, boys. It's a good omen. Yeah, it'll take stock and good omens. You pay us some cash, and I'll make it feel lots better. Well, I can't give you all I promised just yet, boys, but it'll come, never fear. Don't tell us you're sure to cash money. Well, I had to pay out a lot, remember that. Several men who tried to put old Eli either way had to be paid. Why well, did they? They didn't do anything. The old men escaped everything they tried. And yeah, I didn't want them to be dissatisfied and start talking. How much did it cost to hire that masked man? Yeah, that's what I've been wondering. How'd you get him lined up to do the shooting? I didn't have anything to do with the murder. That's the strange part of it. That's why I said that fate was good to us. No, what? Are you ready for us to make the next move? Yes. Can you two get out of town with your wagon without being seen? Sure thing. They won't be heard. The sheriff will spend most of his time at the crane house. Very well. Get everything fixed, then. We'll plan the fire for tonight. We got the shack all fixed. It's between here and Deadwood. All right. Sure will be hard on poor Miss Molly. I'm sorry for her. Uh, it'll be the best thing for her in the long run. She thinks your father's still alive. Well, she's got to know sometime. Now she can sell the mine and go east with a fortune. Maybe as my wife. I'll count on you two to handle the fire tonight. Don't slip up. I'll pay you as soon as I get more cash from my company. They'll send it, won't they? When they hear that I can buy the Eli Crane gold mine? <laughs> I should say they will send it. All right, then. Come on, Hank. We got things to do. Well, there's nothing in the way, nothing at all. The girl will sell, no doubt of that. Hey, Mr. Grant. Well? The sheriff's over at the crane place. He's going to read Eli's will. Well? You want to go over? He said you th he thought you might be interested in it. Oh, sure, thanks. <laughs> this is my big day. You, uh, you can sit right there, Mr. Grant. Thank you. I won't waste time going through all the legal angles. I'll just tell what the will says. I hope, Sheriff, you're not displeasing Miss Molly by rushing things. After all, a few days wait till Jim Crane gets home and Eli is buried. There's a reason for doing this now, Grant. As long as Molly doesn't object. Eli made this will some time ago. It leaves everything to his son, Jim. That's simple and clear. But if Jim dies before Eli, or if Jim marries again, then there's a cash settlement to Miss Molly, the granddaughter. All the gold mine property goes to Jim's younger brother. Oh, younger brother, huh? Yes. He's in the East. He's an operator in gold mines. He wouldn't sell to you, Grant. Well, as it stands now, then, Jim Crane owns the property, doesn't uh, he? That's about it. Now, do any of you folks have questions? Well, if there are no questions, Sheriff, I'd like I to... I got some questions. I'm coming in now, Sheriff, and talk to that ornery pole Eli Crane. Steer, you dirty schemer. Look at the man you tried to murder. You're not dead. You're doggone right I ain't. Where's the Lone Ranger? Where is he, Sheriff? I see him coming. He's stopping outside now. Good. He's on the porch. Come in. You're just in time. Sheriff, Lige and Hank have gone. I was watching them. Good. Those two will tip Grant's hand. But I don't understand. You will. You tell him, Lone Ranger. Tell the weasel-faced skunk. You wanted to buy the crane property for your boss, Clark Drexel. Well, of course, but I... I wouldn't sell. So you figured on having me killed off knowing that Jim would sell. And you learned that Jim had been killed in a fall. But you didn't tell anyone. You looked up Eli's will. You found that with Jim dead before Eli, the property would go to another son. One who would not sell to you. I don't know what you're talking about. You will. You hired Lige and Hank to hide Jim's body until Eli was dead. And you planned on making everyone think that Jim died after his father. Well, this is ridiculous. Why should I? The law would then assume that Jim inherited the gold mine. And when he died, his daughter would be the heiress. She would then sell to you at Drexel's price. You schemed it that way, Grant. You can't deny it. Who can't deny it? I deny every word of it. You lied when you said you talked to Pa in Deadwood. If you talked to him in Deadwood, how does it happen that I found this belt on the man Lige and Hank hid in the mountains? I don't know anything about it. You get in there. No, Don't do get that. My arm! There are your pals, Grant. Uh, me find them. Them got wagon outside. Them talk plenty now. We didn't do no crime. We only... Lige, look at me. Lige... You better tell all you know and save your neck. We didn't know he schemed to kill... You, the masked man. The Lone Ranger, you coyote. Go on. Don't do nothing to us. We got Jim from that ravine. We we only kept him where he wouldn't be found, that's all. What were you going to do next? Why, we was... Go on, speak. We was to take him to Hunter's cabin and set a fire tonight. So everyone would think he'd burned to death 24 hours after his father was killed. Who suggested that to you, Lige? Grant did. I'll get you for that. You did. He ain't paid us. I'll tell more about him, Sheriff. He hired a couple of breeds to start a fight and shoot Eli as if by accident. 
He hired the same breeze to try and kill Eli by cutting bridge under him. Who are you, Why, Curly? Juniper, I don't know what the law can do, but I know what I'm going to do. No, no, don't. Oh. oh, there. Reckon I can still handle my fist. Oh, Drat, it looks like he's busted that chair in his fall. <laughs> you knocked him clean out, Eli. Try to kill me, will he? Scheme to buy my gold mine. Molly, your pa wouldn't have sold to the price Grant was offering. No matter what he thought at first, he wouldn't have done it. No more than I would. Oh, when you inherit, after I'm dead and gone, you can do what you want. I'll but... never sell, never. We cranes will always operate our mines. Some of us have got to stand by our land. Yeah. If this Drexel syndicate gets all the mines the way they're out to do, it'll be bad. They'll set the prices for men's labor. That's right. They'll set prices for shipping. They'll have too much power. Now, this here country isn't based on giving one outfit all the say. We've got to have competition, free enterprise, men that run their own business. Right, right, right. I understand, Grandpa. Boys, you can take Lige and Hank to jail. Between them, they can tote Rodney Grant. If there's no law to jail Grant, then he'll be downright unlucky. Because if I know the men here, he'll leave town on a rail wearing hot tar and feathers. Miss Molly, I'll attend to Jim. Thanks, Sheriff. Say, say, where's that mask man? Where's the Indian? Why... They've gone. Well, we'll get them. I want to thank them. There they are, on their horses outside. I, I want to thank them. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.